Never in human history have so many lived so long. Data suggests that if we reach 65 years of age, it's likely we'll live to 85. We're living longer and we're having fewer babies. The Aging Society is about the fact that you have a larger proportions of people uh, over the age of 60 than you have who are under the age of 15. And it's not just America that's an aging society. Europe, China, Japan, we're an aging globe. An aging society isn't just about old people. It's not just about baby boomers. Gen X will likely live longer, and so will millennials. The baby boomers are an introduction to what will be a permanent shift. It is not the pig and the python, a large snake that swallows a pig, and you see that bulge going through the snake and then coming out the other end eventually. Well, ours never comes out the other end. This is a permanent state we're now in, in a remarkable shift. And the shift will utterly transform our society. How and how long we work. How and where we live how we organize our families, medical care, economic and political lives, how we organize our thinking. This will give you an idea of what's ahead. Right now, about half of us live in the suburbs, and it's where 75% of older Americans live and want to continue to live. But suburbs were designed in the 1950s for young families and the car. There's a disconnect there we have to deal with. It's an old rule of thumb that if you can make the community work, for kids, and if you can make the community work for the elderly, that it will work for everyone else. Same with how we work. We think of 65 as a retirement age engraved in stone. But when Social Security was enacted in 1935, average life expectancy was only 62, three years less than a retirement age. Today, we can expect to live about 15 years beyond traditional retirement age. There isn't anything in the psychology literature that suggests that it's good for people to go on vacation for decades. <laughs> Even if it were a good thing, few of us imagine retirement as a vacation anymore. Most of us haven't saved enough, and we're all worried, for good reason, about Social Security and Medicare. What if we reimagined our standard life course? We think of it now in three age-segregated boxes age zero to maybe 25, childhood and education, age 25 to 65, work, and more and more of it, raising a family, always crunched for time. Age 65 and beyond, little work, lots of rest. What if we imagined that that third box would start just three years before life expectancy today, say, around 75, not 65? What if we worked less in the middle of life and longer at the end. And what if we looked at aging and even our own mortality square in the eye? Children in American society historically have only suffered losses that relate to their parents for the most part. But today and tomorrow, they're going to suffer the losses uh, of great-grandparents, uh, of parents, of grandparents, uh, and so on. So here's the point. The world we live in, the people we've become, demographically speaking, are way different from 1935 or 1950 or even 1970. But our institutions, economies, policies, Social Security, Medicare, our communities, work, all were designed for who we were 50 years ago. They don't work for us today. So are there rough waters ahead? When we think about an aging society, everybody swoons. Oh, my God. You know, they write articles about defusing the demographic time bomb. Why is there an assumption there is no upside? Maybe because the upside requires change. Change we have to design, legislate, wrap our heads around. As a psychologist, I'll tell you the very first step that is really essential, and that's that we begin to envision new models, new ways of being, new lives. How will we come of age in an aging America? The conversation begins. This is a permanent state we're now in.